right, I want to do a moment of inertia calculation for a long, thin rod. And I'm going to imagine that it is of length L. And it has a linear density of mass over L in kilograms per meter. This is, a, this is called the linear density. And I'm going to be integrating um, mu dA, or dL, times uh, x squared going, well, r squared, going from r equals 0 to L. And basically, I'm going to be imagining rotating it around that end right there. So, so the mu is m over L, so it comes out of the integral as a constant. Everything there is constant. Integral from r equals 0 to L of r squared dL, dr, dr. Um, I'm changing my thing, so this wasn't an L, or it's not a differential L, it's a differential R. We'll go out R being the radius away from that point there. So when we do this integral, we'll have keep our constant times uh, the when you integrate you add one to the new add one to the exponent and then divide by it. So this is going to be one third R cubed going from 0 to L. So uh, it'll be m over L times 1 third of L cubed minus 0 cubed. And that just comes out to be 1 third ML cubed. Now this is kind of similar to what you would get with a point mass, which is, which is just m l m r cubed m r squared i'm sorry m l cubed this 3 cancels with uh, l to the first down here and you have m l squared all of these terms come out to be something like m r squared but then they have a factor for uh the long thin rod rotated around its end that factor is 1 third we'll find in in the next example that with a long thin rod um rotated around its center, it turns out to be that i is going to be 1 12th m r squared, or m l squared. In order to do that, we're still going to use this uh, basic equation here. The, the integral, it'll be the integral of mu dr uh, times r squared from r equals, instead of going from 0 to L, I'm going to go from negative L over 2 to L over 2. This is once again going to come out to be M over L times the integral from negative L over 2 to L over 2 of R squared dr. And that is M over L times R cubed over 3 plugging in values of negative L over 2 to L over 2. And that comes out to be M over L times L cubed over 8 minus negative L cubed over 8 uh, di divided by 3, which is M over L times 2L cubed over 3 times 8 is 24, or ML squared over 12. All right, for our next example, I'm going to do a disk rotating around its center with a solid, a solid disk. And this time, we're going to say sigma is equal to uh, the area density of the thing, which is going to be the mass divided by pi times the radius squared. This time our differential volume element is going to be a differential area, and that area is going to be 
made by imagining a tiny little chunk here with a radius or with width dr and with um, height um, r d phi. So this thing is going to get bigger as you go out away from the cone. The further out you are, the it's multiplied by r, and then we'll multiply that by the the angle there, the d phi. So multiplying those two uh, sides together, we'll have r dr. Uh, let's make it a little lowercase r, r dr d phi, because this is uh, something that we'll be changing. The capital R is going to be the constant. And then we'll use integral, basically, of rho dv, the density times the volume, the volume element times r squared. And we'll do that integral over the entire volume. In this case, it's just going to be an area integral over the area, and the area is going to be composed of two variables, r going from 0 to r, capital R, and phi going from 0 to 2 pi, all the way around the circle. We're going to have our density is um, m over pi r squared. This is all constant, so it can be taken outside of the integral. Then we're going to have our r squared, our r squared um, which is right there, and our volume element, which is r dr d phi. I'm going to break this integral down into a product of three different things, because the, var the individual variables are separable, separable. So we'll have m over pi r squared being a constant part. Then we'll have the integral with respect to r, of r cubed dr, and then we'll have the integral with respect to phi of just d phi. This m over pi r squared part just copies down, and then this integral becomes uh, r to the fourth over 4 minus 0 to the fourth over 4 and the d phi integral from 0 to 2 pi is just 2 pi. So then uh, we can cancel out. We've got r to the fourth over r squared is just, we'll have m r squared on the top, the pi r squared over 2 pi. Well, we already canceled the, two, the r, so this is just going to be over 2. So the um, moment of inertia of a solid disk is m r squared over 2. All right, finally we're going to do the moment of inertia for a hollow sphere. And it's got a, uh, instead of working with a volume uh, density, I'm going to work with an area density again. This one is the mass divided by the area of the sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. The differential area thing here is composed of just this side of the sphere, which is r sine theta d phi, and this side of the rectangle, which is r d theta. So it's going to be r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So we're going to take the integral of mu r, mu r, it's going to always be the same r this time, times the uh, differential surface area, sine theta d theta d phi, boy. All right, there we go, sine theta d theta d phi. So um, this is going to be a double integral going from theta equals 0 to pi, and phi going from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to copy down our constant, m over r squared, 4 pi r squared. Then integral of theta. Uh, go ahead and take out all of the r, r to the fourth as well. Theta going from 0 to pi, we're going to have sine 
theta d theta, and then we'll have integral of phi going from 0 to 2 pi, and that's just going to be d phi. Integral of from 0 to 2 pi of sine, we already did that. It's 2. This integral is 2 pi, and so we'll have mr squared over 4 pi. Uh, cancel out the pi's, cancel out the 2's, and something went wrong, I think. I know what went wrong. This r here should not have been a capital R. It should have been a uh, r sine theta, I think. Why? Because we were looking at a uh, distance from the center of the sphere, which should have been r sine theta. Not the center of, of the sphere, but from the axis, the axis of the sphere. So this would be r, r sine theta. So basically, this should have, there should have been a sine cubed of theta here which means the integral of that is not going to be 2. One simplification we can make of that is that this is 1 minus cosine squared of theta uh, times sine theta d theta. If I think of integral of cosine squared theta sine theta and replace cosine squared theta with u squared, uh, d theta would be sine theta d theta then the integral of u squared d, du, sorry, is u cubed over 3, which is, um, in this case, cosine squared of theta over 3. Sorry, cosine cubed of theta over 3. So we would have um, sine theta. This would be 1 times sine theta. Uh, minus this integral, which came out to be minus cosine cubed of theta over 3, plugging in from 0 to pi, um, we would have, uh, for, ze for pi, we would have 0 minus negative 1 third minus for 0, we would have 0 minus 1 third would be 1 third minus negative 1 third or positive 2 thirds. So I'm going to take that 2 thirds and put it right here. And so it'll end up being 2 thirds mr squared for solid sphere. Thank you for watching.